Stephen here from History Hustle and I'm standing in Riga, Latvia. In this video I'm going to talk about Latvia during the Second World War. Now if you see the wagon behind me you probably might think this was the wagon the Nazis used to deport the Jews. But this is not true. Because when we think of the Second World War in Western Europe we mostly think of the terror of the Nazis. And although Latvia had a fair share of that they were maybe even more terrorized by the Soviet Union. All right, we're going to go back a little bit. 1920 Peace Treaty of Riga. Soviet Russia acknowledged Latvian independence. Now, in 1934, Carlos Uriamis managed a coup and gets all power, and he becomes more of a fascist-like dictator. Now, his main goal was to keep Latvia independent between these two major powers, the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. August 1939. Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin signed the molotov ribbentrop Pact, a non-aggression pact where also spheres of influences were decided and Latvia was to be within Soviet influence. Soviet forces occupied Latvia in June 1940. Uliamis and countless other Latvians are being deported to the Russian Far East. Most notorious was the night of the 13th on the 14th of June 1941 where tens of thousands of Baltic citizens were put in wagons like this and deported to Siberia where they had to live under harsh conditions and where many of them would die. One week later Nazi Germany launched Operation Barbarossa, a full scale military attack to subdue the Soviet Union. Latvia was conquered within a week with the atrocities of Soviet Russia still fresh in mind the mass executions, the mass deportations, the Nazis were to be seen as liberators. But soon the Latvians were disappointed. The Nazis had no interest in restoring Latvian independence. Latvia became part of Reichskommissariat Ostland. Right after the Nazis arrived, Jews were prosecuted on a large scale. And some right-wing Latvians and collaborated assisted the Nazis in the mass killings. A little bit outside Riga there was a concentration camp for Jews, Gypsies and other inferior races as the Nazis called them, as well as political opponents. There were also Latvian resistance, for example Latvians that wanted to restore Latvian independence or pro-Soviet Latvians because the Soviets came back. With the Baltic Offensive in 1944, the Soviets reconquered the Baltic states and the Latvian Socialist Soviet Republic was restored. Hundreds and thousands of Latvians fled their country. Because of the war, the population of Latvia had declined by one third. Land reforms were made by the Soviets and deportations resumed. And however, the communistic regime became milder after the death of Stalin in 1953. There was still a process of Russification with Russians moving to Latvia. And with that, the Latvians and their language came in the minority in the cities. Until in the 80s, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev made democratic reforms. With that, more and more protests arose in Latvia. Most famous was the human chain which was formed by two million Baltics from Tallinn to Vilnius as a protest against the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact that was signed 50 years earlier and that was so detrimental for the faith of the Baltic states. The Communist Party lost more and more control and in 1991 the Republic of Latvia was restored once again. That's it for today. I hope you liked it. Give it a like if you do. Subscribe if you have not already. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook, History Hustle. If you have any questions or comments, especially to you all Latvians, I'm really curious what you think of it. Leave it down below. Thanks for watching and until next time.